In this video I'm going to explain how to find the center of a circle given three points on that circle. You could also think of this as starting with the triangle and drawing a circle through the three corners of the triangle or vertices and then looking for what's called the circumcircle. So let's firstly start off with some definitions. So when you're looking at triangles in circles there's something called the circumcircle. This is the unique circle that goes through all three points of a given triangle. So if you have a triangle, there's only one possible circle that you can draw through all the three corners of that triangle. Then you have the circumcenter. That's the center of this circle and one possible center of the triangle. Although we don't typically think of triangles having a center, but there are lots of them. Another example is something called the centroid. If you want to research more about the centers of triangles, I would suggest Googling that. There are many different types of centers of triangles. So in this video, we're going to focus on how to find the circumcenter. You can find the circumcenter given three points of the triangle by finding the intersection of the perpendicular bisectors of the chords. In other words, the edges of the triangle. So this edge would be a chord of the circumcircle. In previous videos, we've talked about how to find this perpendicular bisector. So to find the circumcenter, this involves finding two perpendicular bisectors of any two of these edges and finding where they intersect and that will give you the center of this circle. Okay, let's look at an example then. This question says the points P negative 11, 8, Q negative 6, negative 7 and R 4, negative 7 lie in the circumference of a circle find the equation of the circle. If you were to draw a diagram of this question, it might look something like this. So we have our circle and we have the points P, Q and R and we can create a triangle by connecting those points. So how do we find the equation of the circle? Well, firstly, we need the center and then we need the radius. So how can we find the center? As I was just saying, we need to find the perpendicular bisectors of two of these lines. Now you can pick any two, you could pick PR and QR. I'm going to use PQ and QR, but you could also use PR. There's no real reason why I'm picking these two. It's just you need to pick two, and I've picked PQ and QR. So when you're drawing a diagram, you might notice something about Q and R. Look at these points, negative 6, negative 7, and 4, negative 7. The Y coordinates are the same. That means that Q and R must lie on a horizontal line. Okay, so what's the gradient of a horizontal line? It's zero. So when I'm looking for the perpendicular bisector of QR, I know it's going to be a vertical line. That's going to make my job easier when I'm looking for this center. So remember what we need for a perpendicular bisector? We need the midpoint of that line, QR. So let's start with that. The midpoint of QR is using the midpoint formula, x1 plus x2 on 2, y1 plus y2 on 2. Now, because this is a horizontal line, I know that every y coordinate on that line will be negative seven. So I'm not going to bother calculating this y1 plus y2 on two. I'm just going to write in straight away negative seven. I know that's what the y coordinate will be. For the x coordinate, we take the x coordinates of q and r, negative six plus four on two, and negative six plus four is negative two on two, which is negative one. So we get the midpoint of QR of negative one, negative seven. And because it's a horizontal line, the line perpendicular to it will be vertical. The gradient of a vertical line we say is undefined. And you should also know what the equation of a vertical line looks like. It's always just X equals. Wherever that vertical line intercepts the X axis, that's the value that you put there. And now because this vertical line is going through negative one, I know what the equation of this vertical line will be. So I can straight away say the equation of the perpendicular bisector to QR is X equals negative one. It's the vertical line at X equals negative one. So we've found the perpendicular bisector of QR. Now we need to find the perpendicular bisector of PQ. So we can start with the gradient. It's not going to be as easy as QR because now we need to find the gradient and then the negative reciprocal of that. So starting with the gradient of PQ, using our gradient formula, Y2 take Y1 over X2 take X1. Looking at the points PQ, we can say this will be eight subtract negative seven. So eight subtract negative seven and then negative 11 subtract negative six. This will be eight plus seven, which is 15, and negative 11 plus six, which is negative five. 
15 on negative 5 is negative 3. So that's the gradient of PQ. We also need the midpoint of PQ, so let's work that out using the midpoint formula again. We've got x1 plus x2 on 2. x1 is negative 11 plus negative 6, so I straight away can write in negative 11 take 6 on 2. And then 8 subtract 7. So then we get negative 17 on 2 and uh, 1 on 2 for our midpoint of PQ. Now we can find the equation of the perpendicular bisector using this point and the gradient. So let's write down our point gradient equation. This is y take y1 equal to m multiplied by x take x1. By the way, if I'm going through any of this a bit too quickly, watch my previous videos on circles. I go through uh, similar examples in much more detail, like I talk about this equation in much more detail and the midpoint formula and how to find the gradient of perpendicular lines. I talk about all of that in detail. Uh, so this is stuff that's already been covered. That's why I'm going through it a bit quicker. So anyways, to find the equation of the perpendicular bisector using this equation, plug in this point. Now the gradient is the negative reciprocal of negative three. That's going to be a third. So plugging all of that in, we get y subtract a half and a third multiplied by x subtract negative 17 on two. Expanding these brackets out, we get y subtract a half equal to x on three plus 17 on six. So we multiply by a third there and then add that half to both sides. 17 on six plus a half is 17 on six plus three on six. So we get y equals x on 3 plus 20 on 6, which if you simplify this second fraction, it's y equals x on 3 plus 10 on 3. So now we have the equations of the perpendicular bisectors of PQ and QR. So if we were to draw these in, let's have a look at what this might look like. That's the perpendicular bisector of PQ and the perpendicular bisector of QR. Now where they intersect is going to be the center of this circle, which we need to find the equation of the circle. So how do we find where these two lines intersect? Well, that's like solving simultaneous equations, right? We can use substitution or elimination. In this case, because my first line had an equation of x equals negative one, all I really need to do is to substitute negative one into my second equation. And that will give me the y coordinate for the intersection point and then I can find the x-coordinate. So plugging in negative one into my second equation, let's do that. So we get y equal to negative one on three plus 10 on three. Well, because the denominators are the same, we can add the numerators. Negative one plus 10 is nine. Nine on three is three. So the y-coordinate for where these lines intersect is three. To find the x-coordinate, well actually we just need to consider this vertical line. Every x-coordinate on that line will be negative one. So the x-coordinate of where these two lines intersect must be negative one. So we have the center now is negative one, three. So we could write down our equation of a circle. We don't know the radius yet, but we can write down what we have so far. So the equation of the circle will look like this, x plus one or squared plus y take three or squared equals r squared. Again, if you're not sure how I'm getting this equation, go back to my previous videos. We went through these steps in detail. So now do you remember how to find r squared from this point? Well, because we have points on the circle already, we can substitute any of these points into this equation to find r squared. So I'm going to choose four negative seven and substitute that in for x and y. So x is four, y is negative seven. Plugging those in, we get five squared plus 10 squared equals r squared. So five squared is 25, 10 squared is 100. So therefore r squared will be 125. And then we can write our equation for our circle as x plus one all squared plus y take three all squared equals 125 and that's our final answer. So, so far in this series, we've talked about how to find the equation of the circle. We've talked about uh, intersecting lines in circles, how to find the equation of the tangent line. And in this video, we've talked about how to find the circumcenter. I thought I'd leave you with something to think about. So consider the circle x squared plus y squared equals 25 and pick two points on this circle which are negative three, four and four, three. You can check these lie on this circle by substituting these points into the equation. 
So substituting for three, you'll get 25. So let's draw some tangent lines through these points. This first tangent line will have a gradient of three on four, and the second tangent line will have a gradient of negative four on three. The question is, can you see a connection between the gradient of the tangent and the point of intersection? So can you see a connection between the gradient of this tangent line of three on four and the point where it intersects the circle of negative three on four? And also for this tangent line, can you see a connection between the gradient of negative four on three and where it intersects the circle at the point four three? If you think you see a relationship there, let's test that hypothesis on another example. Let's look at the circle x plus five all squared plus y plus three all squared equals 80. And two points that lie on that circle are negative 13, one and negative one, five. You can check these points lie on that circle again by substituting those coordinates into that equation. And the tangents that go through these points have gradients of two and negative a half. So did the hypothesis you had for the first example hold up for the second example? Maybe for this example, you need to consider the center. So the center would be at negative five, negative three. Maybe that will impact the relationship between these points and the gradients. So hopefully that gives you something to think about. What is the relationship between the point and the gradient? There is a relationship there and it's something you will learn more about when you learn about differentiation in calculus. So you will learn how to find the gradient at all points on a circle and how that relates to the point where it intersects the circle. Anyways, I hope you found that video helpful. Please leave a like if you did and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.